Hey tubers, don't you think it is about time this channel evolved into something a little bit more than DIY power walls? Behind me is my solution to that question. It's a 1973 Leyland Mini and I'm going to turn it into an electric vehicle. I've probably looked at 100 Minis online and gone to visit quite a few trying to find a suitable project or a suitable start to the project. Now whereas this one has got its fair share of surface rust it's not all the way through and it's still got good metal underneath it. This is just years and years and years of dry rot almost because it's been sitting in a garage since 1986 when it was last registered. So it's got two little bits of cancer in it. This here, it's got a little bit of cancer underneath here. They've all the, uh, too much bog on the top of it trying to get it all leveled out. But looking at down here, there's also a little tiny bit of surface here and what I believe they've done is double skin right on this part of the car and the outer skin has been rusted and they've just piled the bog on as indicated by the three fingers there it probably wasn't a professional you can put your hand behind and it's nice and smooth there's nothing there there's no bubbles or any indication of rust has gone all the way through and then the other really bad well it's not even really bad it's just not really good underneath here we've got a nice big hole there of rust and it's all thin in that corner but that piece is still available, I believe, to buy. So I should be able to just take a bit of time, grind that off, and then have that replaced professionally. But apart from that, what else can I say? It's in really good condition. All the floor pans were really good, which was one thing that I really needed to, to be right. You can see there where the spare tire goes. And then the battery, they're nearly always rusted out. That's still got a majority of its original paint on there. No, I mean, um, although it's a bit mucky, I haven't really cleaned it out that much. You can see there that there's no rust in the tailgate. Common area to rust is along here, along the, along the seam and along the sills. And there's nothing in that at all. Even along the bottom, there's no filler in that. So that is really going in my favour. We'll go around to the front of the car. And the bonnet's been painted black. Not sure why, it might be a Mr Bean uh, tribute or something like that. The windscreen popped out on the, the trip over here, but that's neither here nor there. And along the front here, she's copped a little bit of a shove at some stage. She's a little bit dented in. We've got the original bumper down there. It's pretty well belled, dented up. And we've got the bonnet, oh, bonnet latching mechanism there, looking pretty horrible as well. Under the bonnet is still in pretty good condition as well. We're missing a bit of paint around the brake and clutch cylinders along the firewall there and they're all the normal parts that you know you get fuel and brake fluid over it sort of wears off the color is actually hairy lime i'm not sure who gave that that name we've got the fuse box pretty rudimentary fuse box with only two fuses in it standard mini standard leyland stuff and it looks like we've got the mount sitting over there engine mount we might have to keep that just in case we have to reuse them an engine mount there we've got two hoses that go inside for the heater core element of course we'll be changing that to electric got the fuel return pipe down there i might actually leave that there rather than take it off just just in case we go back to original mini but the exhaust there someone's just torn the exhaust off the flange is missing on that and the clutch slave cylinder there the subframe is in good condition there's no big dents or anything like that in there it's missing the drive shafts and it's missing the keys too which is means we can't turn it or steer it hence the effort it took to get it in here uh, this bit here looks like it's actually dinted in just a little bit so it might need to be pulled back out again i reckon the alignment center could do that without too much of a, a problem at all the bonnet itself was in great condition 
The eventual plan, I think, will be, say, three Tesla modules underneath the bonnet, along with the motor and controller. I'll probably put the charger in the boot, because I want to be able to charge it anywhere. So I want to have the most universal charger I can possibly put in it. Now on the inside, I would like to see a Tesla module here. So where that is, we've got this, the driver's side seat that sits here and bolts up to here somewhere. I can't quite see it. And then we've got the, the rear comes back here somewhere. And they're not like um, bolted in four places. They're only bolted twice at the front. So I think I could put a Tesla module here and a Tesla module over there. And as you can see, that is the 1100 motor there. The bore is in pretty good condition. It doesn't seem to be egged or anything. And it was this car was decommissioned due to a head gasket fault, which seems to be confirmed by the head gasket that's over there in the box. We've got the gearbox there. All the synchros and stuff are good in that, so we'll be able to reuse that. But I think these books, we've got a comprehensive workshop manual. Um, now, I don't think that'll be too much use to me, but there will be some information in there that will help me and modifying your Mini. So there are a couple of little bonuses I didn't realise I'd get. We've got the motor there. Yeah, it's a bit grotty and d grubby, but it's been covered up. Got the gear stick and stuff like that. All this stuff won't be reused, but it will serve a purpose. I can either sell it off or keep it. Um, we've even got the original jack and stuff in that bag there, which I was sort of happy to see. With another box with miniatures bits and pieces in the back there. So you can actually can see in here, the floor pan is immaculate. It's fantastic condition. And this was the thing that really sold me. Um, from what I can see, all of the floor pan is really good. And when you saw it coming up off the trailer there, um, it's just, there's no dents or bumps. Oh, I lied, there's a, there's a bit of a push up there, but if anybody's ever driven a Mini, you know that that happens. You hit something and it just pushes up. So there's no, um, I haven't tested the electrics. I've got no keys. It's got the three gauge dash there. I'll be taking that out and I'll be putting the center gauge in. We have also got the standard stereo in there that'll come out, but that'll go in a box with bubble wrap so we can reuse that later down the track if we ever need to. Um, steering wheel, I have the very first mini steering wheel, sports steering wheel, my wife bought me 25 years ago. I still have that, it needs a recover, but that'll be going into this car, so make it a little bit sportier, I guess. And the roof liner, we've already actually um, ordered a new roof liner, a black perforated unit, and it comes with the roof liner. I think it comes with um, new covers for the visors, the side pieces down the back, and along the back, so all that'll be black perforated material. Um, I'll probably delete the interior light, and I might move it back up into the middle of the, um, the car, because I like it in the middle of the car better than over there. Now, the reason for doing the headliner first is because we're going to have to start moving this car around in order to do different tasks. Um, get the motor and gearbox converted over to a Suzuki for the electric. Now, I don't actually know how the electric's going to go, but we're going to have to do something with that. We're going to have to put it on a trailer, and I want it watertight. So I've also gone to the trouble of ordering an entire seal kit, because there's no seals on here. Well, there's not very many. We've got some seals down there. Um, but we've done a whole seal kit, a whole rubber kit, front, back, windows, every rubber in this entire car, um, brake, clutch, accelerator, pedal rubbers, um, even around the lights, the headlights, and stuff like that. All these rubber bits are all getting replaced. So that will be done pretty much as soon as we can to water type this thing up so we can get it around. We do have a, an approximate timeline of about 11 months to have this thing on the road. Even if it's not, uh, you know, perfect, but we still want to get it on the road and get it to drive around and be safe. Um, I've ordered kits for the rear subframe, so I'm going to completely rebuild that. New brake drums, new hubs, new um, bearings, shock absorbers, uh, suspension, all the suspension, all the cones and everything will get swapped out. And similarly with the front, we'll add some eight, seven and a half inch, I think, disc brake front end and replace everything. Uh, steering rack, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the steering rack. I know that's a real big thing to get out because you've got to drop the subframe out to get to the steering rack. So I might have that professionally rebuilt before I go too far with that. I may even also have the front subframe re-powder coated when I have it all apart, just so this engine bay, I can really pre it up and make it a look at a showpiece when I open it up to show people at shows and stuff like that. 
because I plan on getting this car out and being a part of the community is the best I can. So tubers, what do you think of that project? Do you reckon that's a good evolution from power waller to EV enthusiast? I hope this project goes well and I hope you take it well. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.